Welcome to AP Biology Unit 7. This is a focus on natural selection. In this first video, we will cover both natural selection as well as artificial selection. Before we dive into natural selection specifically, let's, get, let's ask a broader question. What is evolution? Evolution is a change in a gene pool over time. And that time frame is generational. And the generational time is very much dependent on the species. So we can be talking about an order of just minutes or days, or we can talk about a whole lot of years. Next question, what is natural selection? Natural selection is where individuals with certain inherited traits have higher fitness because of those traits. And fitness is measured as reproductive success. So some organisms have a higher reproductive success than others because of the traits they have. Natural selection is one of the five mechanisms of evolution. We'll talk about those other four mechanisms in a later video. Natural selection, if we want to look at a specific example, we could look at the evolution of the eye. So the evolution of the eye took place through a series of changes in which each version had a fitness advantage over the previous. So you can see in this diagram, um, it started as just a flat area of um, light cell or light sensitive cells. Um, and over evolution, over evolutionary time, through generation after generation, eyes have evolved to become much more complex. And we should note here that eyes have actually evolved independently in several lineages, which means that the um, ability to see, to be able to detect visual information from the surrounding, has such a fitness advantage that the mechanism of how um, sort of evolution came up with a solution for that has taken multiple different pathways. So for example, um, octopuses have a real wonderful ability to see. They have a very complex eye, but it's quite different from ours um, because it took a different evolutionary path way back at our most recent common ancestor. There are three main requirements of natural selection. What are they? First one is variation. So there needs to be differences within the population. Second one is heredity. So these differences need to be inherited from generation to generation. And the third is differential reproduction. So the, um, the traits need to be correlated with a difference in fitness. A little more detail on each of these. I want to point out that variation is variation in phenotype. And this can be not just um, sort of physical, like in these beetles, you see um, difference in color, difference in size. But this can also be related to physiology, so the inner workings, like the hormones, um, you know, all sorts of the musculature um, would be anatomy, or the behavior. So different um, behaviors are also traits, and those can be influenced by natural selection as well. Now, when we talk about heredity, we usually talk about genetic heredity, so differences in the nucleotide sequences. However, some would argue that there are also other forms of heredity, including cultural heredity that's seen in humans and other species as well, as well as epigenetic, so non-nucleotide modification of the genome. Uh, differential reproduction is measured by reproduction, but keep in mind that in order to reproduce, you've got to survive until that point. So survival is also an important factor in measuring fitness. And a final point is that natural selection cannot create new variation. It only acts on the variation that already exists in a population. There are mechanisms of introducing um, new variation, but it is not through natural selection. That's through mutations. Okay, here's an example, a classic example of natural selection. Take a look at these two moths. The moth on the left and the moth on the right are actually part of the same species. Which moth do you think has the higher fitness? Now that's a bit of a trick question. And the reason I'm giving you this trick question is because it gets at a really important concept that fitness depends on the environment. It's not fixed in time or space. You can't always say that one trait has a higher fitness than the other unless you know what the environment is. So for example, the light-colored moth has higher fitness when and where trees are light-colored, like on the left picture. The dark-colored moth has higher fitness when and where the trees are dark-colored. 
This was studied um, before and after the um, Industrial Revolution and also looking at um, sort of urban versus rural. So during the Industrial Revolution in urban areas, the trees started becoming covered with soot. And so this um, relatively rare variation of moth, this dark colored moth, suddenly had a huge fitness advantage in the areas where these trees became dark. And so the um, proportion of this phenotype rapidly increased in these areas at this time. But again, fitness is environmentally dependent. Next topic, this is unit 7.3. The question is, what is artificial selection? Artificial selection is simply when humans have something to do with this. So humans are the pressure in this case. Um, and this is the intentional breeding of plants or animals for desirable traits. So for example, wild mustard has given rise through many generations of artificial selection to many of our common vegetables. Another example of artificial selection is um, milk yield per cow. So um, farming uh, can influence um, traits in both plants and animals. Um, we also see it a lot in pets, that we have artificially selected pets for traits that are desirable for humans. So that's it for this video. This has covered natural selection and artificial selection.